Hey guys, good afternoon. It is uh, 1.30 p.m. on Friday, April 9th, 2021. Uh, just kind of wrapping up the week here. Hope you had a good week. Uh, wanted to just make another video. This is basically part three in uh, this discussion I've been having on looking for trades instead of looking at just currency pairs, but actually looking at the currency index markets. Uh, and so I'm not gonna rehash all of that. So if you're not familiar with that, maybe go back and watch the couple of videos that I've made prior to this in the last week or so, and you'll get up to speed. Um, but again, what you're seeing on the screen now is my trading view account where you can um, see the eight major currencies plotted as index markets. And again, it's important to understand guys, uh, just, you know, here's one of the limitations of doing this, okay? This, as I mentioned, the, these index markets are only open basically from, um, you know, the start of the New York to the close of the New York session, okay? So they're not open during the Asian session. They're not open during the first part of the London session. And I understand that, you know, depending where you are in the world and, and what your trading objectives are, etc., and, and you really can't argue that a lot of the Forex price action happens during the London session. But there's quite a bit that happens during the overlap. The second highest certainly is the overlap between London and New York, which is from about 8 a.m. New York time till noon time. And then London closes. And then the markets tend to kind of move sideways or much less impulsive generally, unless there's some big news event uh, in the afternoon during the New York session heading into the close for the week or heading into the open of the um, Asian session. Okay, so your opportunity within this type of trading is going to be, uh, you know, a pretty narrow window about getting into a trade if there's going to be one that day because you want to get in at, you know, fairly early in the New York session so that you can take advantage even if you're going to, uh, especially if you're only going to day trade it, especially if your intention is to only get in and get out the same day. You want to make sure that you're, you know, using um, your time to, to get in at the, at the right time. But I, I wanted to just kind of throw that out. There's a little bit of a disclaimer uh, because um, that is probably the, one of the limitations to the strategy is that, you know, because these index markets are only open during certain times of the day, basically during the New York session, that you really can't use this at other times of the day. You can't use it during the Asian session. You can't use it again during the first half of the London session, uh, but you can use it during that New York London overlap. And, and uh, if you wish to continue the trade, certainly you can use it through the uh, afternoon of the New York session. Okay. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. <clears throat> um, so in terms of, this video, what I want to just briefly do is talk about how you can kind of filter what pair, uh, what pair or pairs, <clears throat> excuse me, that you want to try to trade, um, you know, during using this methodology. Because you're going to find that um, th there's, there's, you know, an opening range, like most markets, there's kind of an opening range that happens. And so sometimes you might see the price open on one of these indexes in one direction, and then an hour later it's going the other way. So this is, I, I've been back testing this a little bit. And again, guys, there's no perfect system. Sometimes this is gonna not work. Um, you know, I don't care what methodology or system you use, or if you're a pure fundamental trader, you're not always gonna be right. So, right, we all know that. So, but I back tested this over, over uh, looking at several days. And so far, this is about the best way I can tell you to try to filter that out. Uh, and again, I'm going to continue to work on this. So I, I may have additional changes and suggestions, you know, going down the road here. But for now, this is what I'm, what I'm suggesting. And this is what I'm doing. At least this is what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want, obviously. So what I did here, as you can see on the chart, what you've got here is here, and this is today's market. So here are your eight indexes, and you can see, you know, that the they're color coded. They're over here on the side, but it doesn't really matter right now. And again, this dash blue line here is yesterday's close. So this was the Thursday close. This was 5 p.m. New York time on Thursday. And this first yellow line represents today's open. So this is 8 a.m. New York time, and this is 9 a.m. So this in between here is the first hour of today's trading of these indices okay 
and I'm on a 30 minute chart. Okay, and you can use the 30 minute or the one hour. Okay, I would not go any higher or any lower because if you go any higher, then it, it takes a, 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 the detail away. If you go any lower, it puts in too much detail. And a lot of times these things are going to look flat, no, you know, no matter what they're doing, if you spread it out too thin, like into a 15 minute chart. So in my back testing, I found that 30 minute or one hour chart for view, view is what you want in order to do this. Okay. So what I'm looking at here is basically an opening range. Now it's one hour. The other thing I played around with was how long I keep this range. I tried 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour. Obviously, I, I want to try to make this as short as possible, but still have it be as effective as possible. And I didn't necessarily want to go a full hour, you know, and you basically throw away that whole hour. But I did find in the back testing that, although, again, not universal, I do find that that one hour is, is probably the most conservative way to do this. Now, of course, you can shorten that up, but you're going to be taking a little bit more risk that way, okay? So uh, here's basically what I'm looking for. So at the end of this one hour, so I'm looking at this, let's just take the, the Canadian dollar, that's this purple line. Here's the open and we start it up, okay? And then here's the close, uh, or excuse me, not the close, the, this opening range. And you can see clearly there was an uptrend going on here. And so I'm gonna assume the Canadian dollar is gonna be up on the day based on that. And obviously it has been, okay? We had a little pullback and then we've continued up and now of course we're moving sideways because it's afternoon now and London's closed for the week and it is a Friday. So I would expect that we'll continue just to see this move sideways and maybe even down um, heading into the close. But I just want you to look at just in here, okay? If you take the US dollar, the US dollar traded flat and then it was you know up a little and down a little, essentially it's flat, okay? I would consider this flat to down okay for the for for the day all right and you can just go right through here and see all these okay now here's an example of why you need to wait the full hour this is the swiss franc this uh this white line and you can see it opened lower and looked like it was going down down okay half an hour in so the first 30 minutes it was going down and then look what happened that second half hour it went up and it the range closed higher it closed in an uptrend and look what we've done for the day it's gone up the euro, kind of the same thing. It's a little hard to see this. As I spread this out a little. Uh, just oh, Whatever, this is close enough. Kind of the same thing in the euro. That's this uh, pink line here, or whatever color this is, fuchsia. Down, and then closed higher. And you can see it's moved higher on the day. And it's kind of the same thing. The Aussie down, okay, up. It's gone a little bit higher. It's kind of meandered, so that you know, one's not great. And same thing on the uh, yen down up and it's kind of gone up on the day and then move sideways. Okay, but again, this is what you're looking for. Okay, and just because it continues, you know, several hours later flattens out, that doesn't mean that the, the, the move is still not impulsive. If you go and look at this, you know, you'll, you, you'll see that even after, you know, maybe not on a Friday because it's, you know, on a Friday, everything just kind of drains out after noontime. But Monday through Thursday, you're going to find that even though you might see these things flatten out during, in the afternoon, it doesn't mean the impulsive move is over because, you know, the, the momentum is still kind of there. It's kind of like if you, um, I don't know, the best way I kind of like to phrase it is if you think about like a, uh, an aircraft carrier boat on the ocean, right? If it's got a lot of momentum, if they shut off the engines while it's going at full speed, it's going to drift for a long time in the same direction, right? Well, it's the same thing with this. You have that initial impulsive move. And for the most part, even though it, you, know, you shut off the engines and it looks like it's going sideways, the, the, the impulsiveness is still going to be maintained at least through the end of that session. Okay. So I just want you to kind of use this as, I, my suggestion is that you use this as a filter. And again, it's not always going to work. But if you're using TradingView and you're, you're playing around with this type of setup, go back and just and just put these lines on your chart just go back and just pick a day and I can go back in time here and do the same thing and uh, you know put your period separator on here so you can easily see the close of the previous day and then just throw two vertical lines on here throw one at eight o'clock and one at nine o'clock at the open or whatever time zone you're in the open of the New York session which is 8 a.m. New York time and then one hour later use the 30 minute chart you could use the one hour but I'd recommend the 30 and just wait 
And, you know, you got to resist that temptation of jumping in at that first move because, because again, you know, this is what could happen. You know, if you had taken the Swiss franc uh, and assumed it was going down for the day, so you took a, you took a position where you were shorting the Swiss franc, uh, you know, you could have been in trouble because this turned around, went back against you, and you probably either got stopped out or you were in a loss or a break even, right? Or if you just waited and you see at the end of the hour that it actually was trending up, then you, you, you would have known that you should probably look to take longs on the Swiss franc and not short, okay? So you're giving up that first hour, yes, um, and you're, you're compressing your trading day essentially, you know, down to maybe as little as three hours if you're only going to keep the trade for during the New York, you know, London crossover. But I would have no problem holding this until at least the end of the day. And I'd probably have no problem holding it into the overnight, into the Asian session, and maybe even beyond if I felt that the look when I looked at the chart at the actual currency pair that there was more opportunity for this to keep going but whether you want to choose to do this as a day trader or whether you want to just get out at the end of the day or you know or if you want to continue to hold it into the next session that's another discussion I'm just talking about finding your entries okay and this is the best way I right now that I found to filter out the the um, potential uh, you know change in direction that can happen within the first hour you know, it could be something like the CAD here, which just went up and kept going. But again, it could be something like the Swiss, which was coming out of the Asian session down. And then all of a sudden, you know, and out of the close yesterday down. And then it comes back into the today's price action. And an hour later, it turns and goes back up again. Okay. And you can use this, you know, this opening range to help you filter that out. Okay. So the, the only uh, one I want to show you to kind of prove that is the dollar CAD pair, okay? So let's look at dollar CAD. So here's the dollar CAD pair today, okay? And let's find, now, of course, you know, we only have less than one day here to really examine this. So, you know, but here's the opening of the New York session right here, okay? And if you were in this pair, you'd be up about 37 pips. Now, again, it's a Friday afternoon. Things are really quiet. You're not going to really see anything else happen today. This is probably just going to stall out. It might even go up a little bit. Just people just drain out for the weekend, maybe take positions off the table. But this, I wouldn't be surprised if you see this continue next week. But this is what I'm talking about, right? The dollar CAD did go down on the day. And look, even if you took 40 pips off the table for the day and you exited, right? It's 40 pips. Nothing to sneeze at, depending, you know, how big your position size is. You know, if you had traded a larger position size, you still make a little profit, and it's one pair. All right? I mean, you could also have traded, you know, you could have traded the dollar against the Swiss, too. Uh, you know, you could have traded dollar against the Swiss, kind of the probably the same same thing here. Right, here's the dollar against the Swiss. Um, again, here's the open of the session right here at this high. If you can see in the overnight hours, it rallied, rallied. And then right when New York opened, it went down and you'd be up 30 pips there. So even if you had taken dollar CAD short, dollar Swiss short, you'd be up 70 or 80 pips on the day just on those two pairs, just strictly based on this, okay? So you can see what I'm talking about. So, I, you know, it, it's just a suggestion. If you guys are watching this and you come up with a better way to filter these, um, you know, hey, put it in the comment box. I'm willing to look at it. And I'm going to continue to play around with this stuff too and see um, what, um, you know, what else I might be able to come up with. But right now, this is the best I see. So you got to practice a little discipline. Let the market open. Maybe don't even look at these. You know, wait till 9 o'clock before you go and jump on your chart because you know you may have a little FOMO you know you see like this thing rallying hard like oh I just want to get into a Canadian pair now what can I pair it with oh let me pair it with the Swiss franc because that's heading down today so you you take the CAD Swiss uh, you know long and next thing you know you go and look at your chart and you're like oh yeah that probably wasn't a good idea and the CAD Swiss is stalled out moving sideways because both pairs both currencies are moving higher Okay, where if you just waited, then you could have said, okay, well, no, I'm actually better off taking the CAD against the dollar, you know, the dollar CAD short, uh, you know, or um, really for today, that really would have been your only option. 
today, you know, the, the CAD against the dollar, uh, really your, your option today was the U.S. dollar against other currencies, taking the dollar short, dollar Swiss short, dollar CAD short, you know, uh, uh, pound dollar long. This, this is, uh, no, excuse me, euro dollar long, right? That's this, this is the euro dollar. Um, you know, if you had taken pound dollar long, eh, it probably wouldn't be doing much. And this is going to happen sometimes, guys. Even though, I mean, look at the pound. Even through that one hour um, session, right? You like at the end of that hour, you're like, oh, I'm taking the, the I'm taking this long. But then look what happened. It just kind of dies out. Now, again, some of this is probably because it's Friday. You know, that you, you really have to put an asterisk next to Fridays. But you can see, you know, they really did nothing after that. And some of it is because, quite frankly, the pound is more heavily traded during the early London session than it is during the New York session. That's just a fact. Okay. And so that's, I don't honestly trade a lot of pound pairs just for that reason, because the pound is most active during the first four or five hours, three, four or five hours of the, um, of the London session. And I'm generally not trading at that time because it's just, it's the middle of the night here. Still, I'm usually still asleep. Um, I can catch, you know, maybe three hours in if I get up early enough, but, but that's it. Um, and I don't find that really it ends up being very helpful. So I'm not saying I never do, but I take less pound trades than I do other pairs. And this is part of the reason why. Because, you know, you have this um, tendency for it to kind of start moving sideways the further you get into the New York session. And certainly after uh, London closes at noon, this is going to happen almost every time. Uh, right here where my pointer is, is that's the close of the London session. Uh, but we were moving sideways long before that, really since since nine o'clock. So, um, so anyways, um, so that's going to happen sometimes where things just kind of peter out. But again, um, this is maybe not be indicative of, all, of every day because it is a Friday. But still, it still wouldn't have been a bad choice, right? I mean, if you look at the uh, pound dollar, so let's look at the pound dollar. So here it is, right? So we said pound dollar long, so. Here's the open of the New York session right here. As you can see, it didn't really do much. You know, you'd be up about maybe 17 or 18 pips. And you can see that this pair is in a, overall is in a, you know, on, on the shorter time frame, certainly in a, was in a downtrend. Uh, but, you know, this so this is where you come back to your chart and you start looking for areas of value. And you can see what happened here. You know, we had this spike down. It came down and retested this low right here. You can look at your oscillators. This is when you come back and, you know, not just blindly entering, but come back and, you know, look, are you getting in at a good price? Are you getting in at a good place on the chart? You know, and I would argue that, you know, based on the way this thing looks, I'm not sure I would have taken this trade anyways. It just doesn't look very good. You can see again, it, previously during the, the Asian session, it had come down and took out this, came down here, ret retested this low. We got a double bottom over here over here and then it came back up now ultimately this might turn and go back up but this probably wouldn't have been one i would have taken so again guys that's the yellow point it's just to not enter these blindly just because of this go before you decide which pairs you want to trade because you might have multiple combinations you might have multiple setups you can take well you don't need to take all of them you want to go to your chart after you determine this right then the next thing you want to do is go and look at your charts and look at the price action, look at where the patterns are, see if there's room for it to move. It, if, if it's sitting at a key major area of support or resistance or it's bounced off in a major area, it looks like that trend is old and exhausted. Maybe you don't bother and you just go and take a different one. So that that's what I'm saying. Don't just trade these blindly. Um, but this, this should be your initial work is to... Take that opening range, come up with two or three different pairs maybe you could look at, you know, however many. It might be one one day, it could be four another day. You know, I'm not saying you have to take four and you probably shouldn't. Um, but whatever the number is, whether it's one, two, three, four, however many, write them down and then go to your actual uh, trading chart where you're seeing the pairs and look at where the price is and make a determination whether that particular pair has some opportunity on the day. And this one for the pound, I probably would not have taken either way, and I didn't. 
because just because right where my crosshair is where you would have gotten in and you can see we're in a strong downtrend um, and we had broken although we did bounce off this area so maybe this like I said maybe this will head higher I don't know but you know we, we're in a strong downtrend we came back up to a moving average you know whatever technicals you want to use here to maybe decide to like yeah this might not be the best one to take today now look this could turn around and blast up next week and you know and I have said that sometimes these these things can can take a, a day or more to actually unfold. It may not even fully happen on that day. Um, but again, if you're a day trader, you know you, you don't want that. You want to be able to just get in and out the same day. So you want the ones that are going to move on that particular day, and not have to worry about holding them into uh, you know multiple sessions. Okay. So again, guys, the main purpose of this is to talk about opening range. This is how you kind of figure which ones are, are uh, you know, which uh, combination, which pairs you want to potentially uh, uh, take. And, you know, wait for that full hour. Wait for that 9 o'clock hour to hit. And as soon as price tags this second line, then go ahead and just take a quick eyeball. It's very easy, very quickly. You can see what's going on. And, you know, take the ones that are obvious. If it's not obvious, don't take it. You know, if it's not clear what it's doing, don't bother. There's other ones you can look at. And then before you, t and then, you know, before you decide, go and look at your actual pair on your, on your, the chart, you know, that shows the pair and you can go ahead and, um, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, make sure that you're, it's a good value place on the chart to take a trade and you're not buying at the top, selling at the bottom, uh, or, you know, jumping on some, you know, a, a, an old worn out trend that's may not end up doing anything. Okay. So uh, that's it. I hope that's helpful, guys. I'm going to leave it there. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Smash the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you haven't subscribed, just finding the channel, hit that subscribe button down here somewhere. You should see that. And then ring the bell notification. Hit that icon down below the video so you get notified as soon as I post a new video, which is on average one, or one to two times a week, sometimes more, but usually no more than one or two a week. Okay, and um, I hope that's helpful, and I hope this is a little bit different than other things you might be seeing on YouTube in terms of, you know, technical setups. So, all right, guys, have a great weekend, and I will talk to you all soon.